What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host, Avery, here, bringing you guys one interesting hell of a deck profile. This is Dice Burn, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I saw this build on uh, YGO Organization, and I tried to look into whether it was like a deck that topped or if it was like an instructor deck it seems to be just like a creative deck profile that could possibly be competitive possibly not um it it didn't the deck list itself didn't say whether it topped an event or anything so i can't speak for that um but regardless i still think that this is one interesting hell of a deck it revolves around dice something that it's just absolutely garbage in the game. You know, you're relying on luck. You're relying on, you know, a percentage chance to roll a certain dice roll. And so I just thought it was a really cool deck. I've tested some hands with it. I haven't done any matches with it um, because, again, it, it just it seems kind of gimmicky. Seems like it has a chance, but not really, especially in the meta that we have right now with a ban list that could pop up at any point in time. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this here. So I'm going to go through the whole deck list. Um, and as I go through, I will explain what the hell all these cards do. So we've got one copy of Morphing Jar, one copy of Snipe Hunter. Uh, Snipe Hunter, it, it's the OG one-for-one one removal card. You ditch a card, and then you target a card on the field, roll six-sided die, and then you destroy the target unless you roll a one or six. And then we have Dice Jar. So it's a flip effect. Both players roll a six-sided die. The player with the lower result takes damage equal to their opponent's roll times 500. However, if the winner rolled a six, the loser takes 6,000 damage. If the rolls are same, both players roll again. So uh, your whole concept around this deck is to have it revolve around you just abusing dice re-roll and that six, which is very busted, which we'll get to uh, in just a moment. And as well as Junk Sleep is a pretty good card as well. But your main win condition is you want to combine Dice Jar and this card, uh, Niza, Niza Hanabi, which I think comes out in Phantom Rage. It's a level 4, 2000 attack, 200 defense. Uh, cannot be used as a material for Fusion Synchro or Caesar Link Summon. That's cool. We don't care about that. Uh, if it's normal or special summon, you place six counters on this card. Once per turn during your end phase, give control of this card to your opponent. Once per turn, if control of this card with a counter changes, roll a six-sided die and remove as many counters from this card as possible. Up to the result, if the last counter counters is removed from this card by this effect, destroy it, and if you do, take 2,000. So, ideally, you want to give this to your opponent. Uh, once you summon it at the end phase, they get control of it. You roll a six, it loses all six arrows, and they take 2,000. Um, so we're playing three copies of that, and then we're playing two copies of Spirit of the Fall Wind. Uh, whenever it's normal, something you get to add a flip monster from your deck to your hand, so it lets you get one of your jars to your hand. For the spells, we're playing Double Book of Eclipse, just to flip everything face down, and face flips up, draw that many cards, uh, and then we can abuse our flip effects. we got two Book of Moon, and then we have three copies of Diced Dice. Try saying that ten times fast. So its effect is that uh, you roll a six-sided die, and if you roll a one or six, you get to add one card from your deck to your hand that requires a die roll. So it's it's your roto of the deck. You get to add this, you get to add this, you get to add this, this, this. Um, yeah, you, you've got options. Um, if you roll a number other than one or six, roll it again and apply the appropriate effect. So if it's one or six, then the spell card returns your hand, and if it's two through five, then you place this card on top of the deck, and you can only activate one per turn, uh, which is most likely going to be irrelevant because of that six. We're then playing two hand destruction, one monster reborn, two pot of extra, and one the shallow grave, get back a monster from the grave and set it. I put this in the side because I feel like a third pot of extra would be better than a hand destruction, but anyway. Uh, then we're playing two back to the front, you get target monster and grave, special summon in defense position. Uh, burst or birth, you pay 2,000 life points, target monster and grave, special summon in face down defense. It's another shallow grave, basically. Then we're playing three copies of dice reroll. Uh, one time during the rest of this turn, if either player or players rolls a die or dice, you can have the player or players reroll, you only get a spent once per turn. So if you have dice jar, and let's say you roll a one and the opponent rolls a two, you can use dice reroll to reroll. Um, or to change the opponents. Like if they get a six, you can make them re-roll. Uh, then we're playing two copies of Junk Sleep. Uh, if your opponent normal or special summons a monster or monsters, then you can change all your face down defense position monsters you control to face up attack position. So if you have this set, then as soon as they summon, you know, uh, Ecclesia 
or they summon out uh, Mech Knight Orcus Girsu. You activate this beforehand, and then this flips up and you get the effect. Um, during the end phase, you can change all monsters you control to face down defense session. You can only use each effect once a turn. We're playing two copies of Magic Cylinder for the burn, two copies of Trap Trick to get our dice reroll, uh, or even our Magic Cylinder, uh, two copies of Wabaku, and then finally three copies of that six. This is your MVP card of the deck. It's a continuous trap, um, and its effect is that each time a player rolls a dire dice, you can choose one die result and apply the appropriate effect based on the result. So if you roll a 1, 3, or 5, then the die result is treated as 6. If you roll a 2, 4, or 6, the die result is treated as 1. So if you flip up dice jar, activate the effect, and chain that 6, you roll dice jar and you hit, let's say, a 1, you can use that 6 to change the 1 to a 6 and then be able to deal 6,000 points of damage. For the extra deck, we're playing three Black Ship of Corn, three Crazy Box, three Nightmare Cerberus, three Phoenix, and three Unicorn. Pretty much just because we're playing extra, we're playing three copies of everything. Um, Crazy Box has not been seen play for years, uh, but it is another dice card. It requires two level four monsters. It's generic. Uh, it can't attack, but once per turn, you can detach an Exceeds Tarot from this card. Roll a six sided die, then apply the result. If you roll a one, then you have to cut your life points in half. If you roll a two, you get a draw card. Uh, if you roll a three, your opponent ditches a card. Roll a 4, negate the effects of one face of card on the field at the end of this turn. 5, destroy one card on the field, or 6, destroy this card. So if you've got that 6, you can pretty much change it to whatever roll you want for the most part. So, yeah, I mean, pretty much the way that you win with this deck is that uh, you get out Dice Jar and Niza Mahabi and you just win. I feel like that this deck is sort of a going first deck. Uh, kind of hard to tell, honestly, but, you know, when you look at this 5 card starting hand here, you know, you're taking a risk activating dice dice without having that six or dice reroll set up. So with a typical hand like this, you would just want to summon a snipe hunter, set everything, and then when the opponent starts making plays, you can interrupt them with the Book of Eclipse. Um, you can activate dice dice and chain that six so that you can get the roll that you want. You can get dice jar to your hand. Um, yeah. So again, or even get the Niza Mojave to your hand. So again, it's a really interesting concept. I think it's really funny that someone like made this deck uh, and posted it on the organization. Again, I, I think it's an instructor deck. I really don't know because it's playing things like Trap Trick and Extra. So I don't think an instructor deck would be playing these cards. You know, instructor decks are meant to introduce people into the game. But still a very interesting concept all around. I mean, I never thought I would see someone be like, you know what? We're going to take the dice mechanic, and we're going to make it as competitive as possible. So, yeah, th this is a dice burn deck, you know. Like I said, your your end goal is to, you know, get off dice jar, deal 6,000 damage as many times as you can, as well as getting Niza Mojave off to deal 2,000. And, uh, I mean, really, dice jar on that 6 is your MVP. If you get these off, you're pretty much going to win. Obviously, the big problem with this deck is that if the opponent goes first and they just drop their pants and dookie all over the board, which is what this format has come to, um, <laughs> I mean, you're not going to stand a chance. You know, they're going to have a Borload Savage. They're going to have Link Tokens. I mean, they're just going to have everything on the board. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it, it makes you question how competitive this deck actually is. So let me know what you guys think about this. Um, I feel like that there's some things that could be done better. Like, I don't think I would want to play Magic Cylinder. I feel like I'd rather play Dimension Wall because Magic Cylinder targets a lot of things can't be targeted. You know, you can't use this on Red Eyes Dragoon, but you can use Dimension Wall on Red Eyes Dragoon as something that they don't have a card in their hand to negate it. <laughs> so, yeah, if y'all want to troll some people on Dueling Book or, uh, you know, EDO Pro or something, uh, just don't go up against me. I'm immediately going to quit on Out of the Game. I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> so, Maybe somehow fit some Mystic Minds in here, uh, and then just play like one monster at a time to slow roll the opponent. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think that this is a, at, a, at all competitive? Do you think that this is just the cheesiness of the cheese, of all the cheese? Like, we're talking just melty, gooey cheese? Uh, or is this deck just like a whole brick house? Like, I'd be very curious to know what you guys have to think. Anyways. Leave a comment on down below. Be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.